Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Um, we are in uh, we are in chapter two or session two. It's called the Anatomy of Discouragement, um, and day one is misplaced priorities. Oh, this is so good. I hope I can um, um, give you a good lesson for today. Um, today at my job, or the, I'm sorry, this season at my job, um, we do valuations. So every May, June, we do valuations. And valuations is a time where we um, send out papers to all of our employees and we have them fill them out with letters about how they feel they're doing their job. And we probably have 10 little lines where you get to answer about yourself that you're an E, which is meaning excellent and you have no mistakes, or you have an M, um, or you have uh, some other letters as, as we fill in these uh, valuations. So definitely a time of, of stress for lots of people. Definitely uh, a time for myself where um, I definitely need to set aside some time so that I can uh, review what my employees have sent me. And then I need to make a determination um, how they've done for the year. And I really don't like this time because, um, you know, I don't like pointing out people's wrongs, pointing out people's errors. I'm so thankful that we serve a God who... Um, shows us our faults, doesn't he? he? He does sometimes. When you pray to him and you go to him and you're saying your prayers and you're asking for forgiveness, he sometimes has to do that hard task uh, the, or the Holy Spirit does of saying, you know, look how you did this or look what you did here. And that's a time of reflection for each one of us to say, yes, God, and forgive me. And yes, I really handled that poorly, God, and forgive me. And then ask him to help us. So for sure, uh, um, now I'm dealing with lots and lots of employees. So um, many, many strong women that I deal with, um, many uh, um, front desk staff that I deal with, many doctors that I deal with. So um, as I'm going to work every day, I'm hoping that my heart is cleaned out. And as God shows me my errors, that I, uh, that I ask for forgiveness for those. And then I, I dust off and I say, God, help me to go be the leader that I've, that I've, that you want me to be and not who I am because I do make lots of mistakes. All right, let's get started, um, on our Bible study. So it's called Misplaced Priorities, and we're going to turn to Haggai 1.1. 1, 1. So if you can go there with me. Um, I feel like we talked about this a little bit uh, on Wednesday night with Jackie. We did. Um, we watched the video, and I hope that you're getting to joy because these videos and stuff are so good. Don't miss it. Um, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, All right, so to whom was Haggai about to preach? And it says, Zerubbabel and Joshua, the high priest. Right, he's getting in ready to influence the influers, the priest, and the politician. Remember last week, Z and Joshua were probably sweating in their sandals, wondering if they were being called to the carpet. As Haggai began, the temple wasn't finished, and they were likely frustrated or discouraged. Haggai knew why. Okay, uh, then we want to go to Lord in prayer. Here I am, just jumping right in because this stuff is so good. All right, let's bow our heads and we'll have a prayer, and then we can go on to our study. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for another day, Lord. Thank you, God, uh, for being our King and, and our Lord. Thank you, God, for being the one we can come to with all the problems we have. And Lord, we have so many. Father Jesus, uh, I'm thankful for this study because it, it shows that um, in all things you are in control. And, and we forget it, Lord. Sometimes I forget it, Jesus. Forgive me for that. 
Um, I pray, dear God, for um, each and every person that you put in my life. I pray, dear God, for every person who's watching this. I pray, Lord, that you go before us and give us exactly what we need this day, Lord. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to hearing from the word of God. And, and Lord, coming to you first thing in the morning and not getting sidetracked with all these other things, Lord. And thank you for hearing our prayers and for giving us. Thank you, God, for going before me now during this valuation time at work. And help me to be the person that you want me to be, Lord, and not who I am. Give me uh, wisdom, give me grace, give me mercy. Help me, Lord, to be wise, uh, more wise than I ever could be. Um, and thank you, God, for every time that you give me opportunities, Lord. And thank you for always going before me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as we look down here, it says, it says, um, let's, let's, you and I skip down a few verses and start with feelings before we tackle the facts. Read Haggai 1, 6 and list the five reasons Haggai gave for their uh, frustration. Here we go. Here we go. 1, 6, it says, ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. Wow. There's our answers right there. All those things, right? What did those five reasons have in common? And I wrote, the person is never satisfied. There's enough, never enough. There's never enough food. There's never enough money. There's never enough um, um, drink. There's never enough clothes. Um, it seems Haggai's people have found themselves in the constant frustra frustration of not enough. They found themselves in a state of perpetual disappointment and discouragement. Nothing satisfied. Oh, they were never satisfied. Do we feel that way sometimes? Absolutely we do. We feel like we are never satisfied. I'm sure we've all felt this way at some point. Think of a time when you found yourself in a state of constant frustration or discontent. What were the circumstances? Um, I wrote some things for myself, my job, hard job, uh, learning, patience, 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 people, people, people. Um, and I hope you answer that question too, right? Um, I said, I said, let's keep going. Let's keep going as I take a minute and I'm reading my book here. It says Haggai 1 4. Let's go. Let's go there. Review Haggai 1 4. It says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie in waste? And what did Haggai say the Jews? Why did Haggai say the Jews were dissatisfied? We are spending lavishly on our own homes and time there, and no time in the house of the Lord. And then she talks about um, how her and her husband worked on their house. And, and Sam and I are working on our house. Um, um, and we are having a problem in our basement, which anybody who lives in Michigan or many different places, you're having problems in your basement. I think for the last few years, we've had lots and lots of rain. And so that is causing um, problems in our basement. So our basement has been all torn apart. Um, um, and still, we're so blessed to have a house. I'm still so blessed to have a little yard. I'm still so blessed to have all the things that God has given me. So let's keep going. It says, um, understanding the meaning of paneled houses, what could Haggai have been saying was true? the true reason for their frustration. Circle rich phrase best sums it up. So misplaced priorities, that's the problem here. Um, let me give you a few questions to ponder as we think this through. Is it wrong to live in a nice home? No. Is it selfish to care about that appearance of your home? No. Is it shallow to enjoy decorating your home? No. Is it unchristian to invest in a home? No. Is it a wrong desire, security, and comfort? Is it wrong to desire security and comfort in your home? No. I ask you those questions because Haggai just got on to Z, Josh and the people about their homes, or did he? Hmm. Let's... Te let's tease out what Haggai 1, 2 to 4 says and what the true issue was. Okay. Did we read 2? Let's read 2 to 4. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying this people, say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, it, 
Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie in waste? So God's saying, oh, you've got houses over there, but my house isn't done. My house isn't finished. So you'd rather work on your houses and not the house of the Lord. And and this really, really, um, you know, uh, touched my heart today. And it says timing seemed to be a big issue here. The word translated time in Haggai 1, 2 means a fit or proper time. You may not see it in your translation, but the word time is used twice in verse two. The repetition is used to show emphasis, and it also compares what the people say in verse two to what God says in verse four, where time is found again. The people weren't saying that the temple didn't need to be rebuilt. They were just questioning if it was the proper time to do so. So that's so good, isn't it? Dr. Stephen Miller said, states, this pious sounding rhetoric was nothing more than an excuse not to follow the Lord. In reality, many of the people had become so obsessed with their own lives that they had little time for the things of God. Moreover, in the following verses, Haggai related that they selfishly would rather spend their money on lavish alms than the house of God. And I wrote, ouch, truth. There's a time for everything. Investing in your home or in your needs or wants is not a bad thing and in and of itself. But Haggai, it seems that as they were, as they say, timing is everything. Ponder that for a minute. Which house was getting the people's time, priority, and attention? Their own houses, not God's. And she says again, oh girl, there's nothing wrong with living in a nice home, but there is something wrong with neglecting God's priorities while we pursue our own. The Jews' issue was misplaced priorities, and that's often my issue too. We often can trace our discontentment, discourage, and dissatisfaction to a priority of what is out of whack. When self-promotion is above God devotion, we end up dissatisfied. I said, wow. In the case of the Jewish people, their self-focus involved neglecting to repair God's temple, therefore neglecting to worship in the temple. Girl, it wasn't about their houses. It was about their hearts. And bam, nothing has changed. It's the same with us. And I wrote underneath that, it's all about our hearts. And that's my heart. This is about my heart. Um, I And here's a question for you. Am I generally satisfied and content? What do I do when I'm not? So that's a great question. Um. I wrote grumpy with my sisters in Christ, judgmental of them if they if they won't do it. Um, and I said, I'm not either. And I, then that gives me a bad attitude and I have an ugly heart and I have a jealous heart. I'm so busy sometimes and they are not. Ouch, 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 ouch. Um, am I often seeking a greater thrill or a different experience? If so, why? I wrote, yes, boredom, always wanting more, selfish, jealous of others, not content. When Satan gets us sidetracked, we uh, all lose. Every person's journey looks different, doesn't it? That, and, and that's okay. Let's get back on track right? So my life doesn't look like your life and your life doesn't look like my life. And that should be okay because God has a different journey for me and he has a different calling on my life, doesn't he, than you. So in my heart, I, I got to get my heart right. I got to get back in there and say, Jesus, help me lay this all down. Help me lay this at the cross and be the person that you want me to be and help me, God, to... um just keep my eyes right. Keep my focus on you, God, and not on other people. This is not about them. My journey with Jesus is about me and, and what he has for me and who he has for me, for me to reach for him. And you have who you who God has for you to reach, and he has your journey for you, and it doesn't look the same. And so when I start getting my eyes here at ground level and looking at other people, I can't do that. I cannot do that. It says, what motivates how I spend most of my time? Well, what motivates you? What motivates me? Um, I spend a lot of time at work. Does my self-focus cause me to neglect what God has called me to do? Or do I have a good balance? 
Um, I pray I have a good balance. That was my answer. I pray Jesus goes before me. I pray God that I can keep my eyes on the Lord and keep my eyes focused about every day and what he has me to do and that I keep myself right. And listen, some days I win that battle and some days I don't win that battle. And when I don't win that battle, um, you know, sometimes it's time for me to come home. And I went to bed at last night at eight o'clock and sometimes it's okay for me to just come home, take a bath and go to bed and then get up today and I get to try again, right? Every day that God gives me here, I get to try again. Um, it says, it says, Pause here and pray about your responses. When we study God's word, we also need to study our hearts in the light the word brings. So linger as long as you need to. Don't be in a hurry to just fill in some blanks, all the while leaving big gaps in your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what you need to see about your priorities. Okay, good job. Your father doesn't want you to live dissatisfied, discouraged, or settling for misplaced priorities. It says, why does God tell you and the Jews, what does God tell you to do in the Jews about this in Haggai 1, 5, and 7? What was the command God shared in both of the verses? Here, let's go there. Uh, Haggai 1, 5, and 1, 7 it says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed house? Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's four. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Uh-oh. Thus in seven, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. It says the command is translated in different ways. Consider your ways. Think carefully about your ways. Give careful thoughts to your ways. What do you think the command meant? Review what you do and why. Are you putting Jesus first? Are you serving him with all you have? Um, another here, let's let's keep going into that. And and this this chapter is a little longer. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it all in here. It says the phrase consider your ways is translated as you set your heart on your ways. The word is considered a compound word composed of set or consider, the inner man, mind, or heart. It can mean journey. It can also mean journey or manner. It says in the Jennifer Rothschild version, it means in your deepest part, focus on what you do and why you do it. Girl, you've got to consider your ways set our hearts on our ways. And honestly, ladies, um, God is telling us to um, set your heart on your ways, your priorities, your choices. Think about them. Pay attention. What is your heart set on? What is your priority? Sometimes we don't stop to consider our ways. We just do our thing and never stop to think about what we are doing and why we are doing it. We feel frustration or discontentment and then amuse ourselves with something else and move on. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. It says, it says, we all know what amusement is. If we get right down to the roots, muse equals think and, e and uh, equals not or without. So to amuse means to not think. It means you don't consider your ways. You don't set your heart on your ways. You distract yourself instead. So today, think about it. Really consider your ways. Journal about what your priorities are. Consider where you spend your time, talent, and money. Consider your priorities. Consider if or where you feel frustration, discontentment, or dis dissatisfaction in your life. Ask God to begin to refine your thoughts and give you clarity on how your priorities affect your satisfaction and contentment. Lord, help us to consider our ways. Reveal truth to us. Amen. Full day. Good stuff. Wow. Ouch. That was so good. Consider your ways today. I have to run. I'm going to be late. We can do this. No giving up. Not today. I love you.